Morning, Brenda. Morning, Reba. Morning, Steve. Good morning, friends. Good morning, Cassandra. Good morning, Juliana. Good morning, Cecilia. Good morning, Bootsy. Good morning, world. Today is Tuesday. It is 7.01. We're going to get started here with our, our, our training today. And my message today is, is uh, it's about a, 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 a philosophy. And the, the story goes that in the 1950s, uh, or actually before the 1950s, an anthropologist was uh, traveling deep into Africa to study uh, native tribes. Um, and they were, you know, uh, hadn't, hadn't discovered even what all the peoples that lived in the interior part of Africa were and their languages, and so they were learning about their culture. And the anthropologist stumbled upon a, you know, a, a village and settled down to start to study behavior and see what the culture was like in, in this particular part of Africa. And he brought with him candy. And uh, so, for, you know, for, for, for native tribes that had not had been exposed to sugar or sweets, like that candy was like unbelievably potent and, and very sweet and very motivating uh, for the kids and the adults alike to get. And so he was doing um, all kinds of different tests and he wanted to see how competitive this uh, particular tribe was. So he took a basket of candy and walked it to one end of the village and like tucked it behind a tree so they could all see, everybody could see where it was at. And then he told them that whoever finds that basket of candy first is, gets all of it. So whoever gets that basket of candy gets all of it. Now he expected the kids to just like go out there in a dead sprint and, uh, and, and get all the candy. But uh, what he observed was quite interesting. And when he laid out the rules uh, for this uh, winner take all scenario, the uh, village, the villagers locked arms and together traveled over to the basket of candy and they all got there at the exact same time, sat down and then proceeded to share the, the candy. And he was, you know, surprised by this, you know, and, and uh, th he was curious as to what, uh, you know, what, what, le what led to this behavior. So he asked them, why did you choose to, to do it this way? Like, tell me about um, why, why it's important to, uh, why, why this was, a, you know, an important way to solve this problem. And one of the villagers told him, well, you know, one of us can't be happy if everybody else is sad. And they used a word that uh, would later become a, a big, uh, a famous part of uh, African politics, but the word is Ubuntu. And that is loosely translated to I am because we are. And the, the idea that the, the collective happiness and the collective um, satisfaction and the collective humanity of, of the group is more important than the, you know, the, the success of an individual. And uh, it's, a, it's, a powerful, it's a powerful thought at Training for Warriors. We have next in Liba, which is love the person next to you. And the idea of sharing love and sharing um, kindness and working together is probably the single most important factor uh, in, in our individual success as humans um, and, and as in our species success as we grow. And, and it's th that for me, that whole, the, the story of the day encompasses the message of training for warriors and, you know, my personal philosophy. It, from, you know, what my, I seek to help as many people as possible get to where they want to go. And I think that everybody in this community is another one of those uh, kindness forward Ubuntu uh, philosophers and um, I appreciate each and every one of you and I can't wait to continue to help you 
build some muscle, burn some fat, and bring forth the warrior within with uh, some strength training. So, so we're gonna loosen up our shoulders first, and we're gonna do one of my favorite exercises, which is an inchworm, so we can get some uh, overhead action on our lats and our shoulders. So we're gonna begin with a basic inchworm. My feet are 12 inches apart. I'm gonna bend over, walk out, come into the plank. Once I get to the plank, I'm gonna lead with my butt. So I'm here, and I'm gonna walk myself back, touch my toes, come out. I want everybody to give me five of these. Enjoy that stretch of the hamstring, upper back, complex. Feel really good. So just doing those walkouts, um, which is what they really are, just to stretch a little bit, get moving. We're going to loosen up the pecs and the biceps with some ground stretches. So I'm gonna be face down on the ground. I'm gonna reach out with my left hand, grip the earth, kick my right foot over, and breathe into my bicep here. So when my foot kicks over my hip, I'm gonna feel the stretch in my pecs, in my shoulder, maybe even in my bicep on my left side. And I want you to use your breath to soften your face, soften the tissue and the chest that you're stretching. A long, slow exhale and a relaxed face go a long way for opening up the, the body. Woo wee One more breath. And then we're gonna switch to the other side. So gripping the floor, kicking it over. Whew. Oh. Big breath. Whew. It's okay if one side is tighter than the other. Breathe into it a little bit more, relax a little bit more, but don't force it. So I have my hand on the ground in front of me and I'm gently pressing into the ground, but I'm not trying to make my body do anything. I just wanna lean into that pressure in the moment and stretch. One more big breath. So we stretch the biceps, stretch the pecs. Now we're going to stretch the lats. I'm gonna come into this kneeling pose, coming out like a little child's pose. And then I'm gonna, with my hands, I'm gonna crawl, my arms outstretched. I'm gonna crawl all the way to the right. Big breath. Whew. Breathing. Breathing. After a few breaths here, one more. Whew. I'm gonna go to the other side. Walking those hands all the way out. Breathing. Once you find that tension point, you can sit there. The big breath helps inflate that rib cage, lift, like, stretch that lat kind of automatically. And then relaxing your face helps a lot too. So, Coming back out of that stretch, opened up the lats, the pecs. Now it's time to 
get our, uh, our chest and triceps warmed up a little bit. So we're going to do a T-spine push-up. So I'm going to have my feet wide. I'm going to slowly descend into the push-up. I'm going to pop up. I'm going to bring my hand out high, just like our archer plank, coming back down. And I'm just going to do three push-ups per side. So if you need to get onto a couch or a chair, you can do that too. But just warming up those chest and triceps so I can use those muscles here. Do one more per side. Okay. Shoulders are a little bit warmed up. So now what we're going to do is we're going to combine a couple of exercises in a circuit here. So hopefully you have some weight. So if you uh, have some dumbbells, we're going to be in a kneeling position. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to squeeze my butt, push my hips underneath my shoulders. I'm going to do a curl. And once I get this curl to this point, I'm going to translate it into an Arnold press. So I'm going to rotate corkscrew out, press overhead, come right back down into that rack position, and then back down into the curl. So it's a curl to Arnold press, back down, and that's one. Curl to Arnold press, back down, that's two. So you're going to go and you're going to do eight of these Arnold presses, curl to Arnold press. Now if you have a kettlebell or one dumbbell, then you do a curl to overhead press and then back down. When you're on your way down, you want to make sure to give it a two count, 1,000, 2,000, so you're not hurrying, right? So make sure you get at least five reps in for the warm up, just priming those muscles. But we're going to get we're going to get a lot more reps in today. And when you're finished with that, we're going to do a split stance row with a pronated hand. So I'm going to do a, 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 a single arm row, whether it's with one kettlebell or one dumbbell, or heck, even if you have nothing at all, you can still do it. But I'm going to face the wall. I'm going to get into a long stance. Now I'm trying to get my back to be as close to parallel to the floor as I can. It's probably going to be right here at a 45 degree angle. And then my thumb is going to point towards me. So I'm going to pull my thumb into my belly as I, row, as I row. And that's going to keep my body or my shoulder in that specific position that we're training today, targeting the rhomboids. Go ahead and give me six reps per side just to learn the movement. All the way back. One, two, three. And again, that thumb points in. The back is as close to parallel as you can get. Pretty deep. So you got that long stance. You're going to do, we're going to do eight reps of the curl to Arnold press. And then we're going to do 12 reps of the pronated grip row. So we're going to do four rounds. And we're going to rest about 45 seconds per. So it's just enough rest to, to be strong in that. You want to grab my phone? It's, in the, it's on the couch in the. So the key is tempo matters more than the weight because we can't control the weight. Most of us don't have a bunch of weights at home. So we're really focusing on time under tension 
and our, and our core strength and the, and the muscle tension we're able to create. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm here on the ground, glutes on, pushing my knees apart. I'm going to curl all the way out, all the way in, 1,000, 2,000, that's one. All the way out, all the way in, that's two. So tempo is more important than anything else. If you have to go fast, you're not getting the value out of this. Unless you're like Steve and you can do a 100 pound overhead press. In which case, good for you. We all can't be Steve. Coming back down, four, pressing up, down, five, pressing up, down, six, up, down, seven, that's eight. So, as we move through that, get back into that rowing stance. Again, thumbs pointing inside toward the body. Big split stance. One, two, remember we're not going too fast. Three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So slow and methodical. That's one round. We've got so many rounds left to go. We've got three more. Grab some water so you can be strong. Round two. So you know what to do now. Let me see that you do it right. Curl the press. Nice work, Reba. Rib cage down, glutes on. 1,000, 2,000. Good tempo, Brenda. All right, Steve. I'm watching you. Yeah, Steve, just go a little slower. Notice I'm not necessarily stopping in any of the positions. I'm just going methodically through each one. That was three. It's hard to keep the glutes on the whole time. So what you're looking for when you're rowing is you want to have that arm be pulled out of the socket just a little bit so that lat has to stretch. And then once you find that stretch, you're going to pull 
and they're going to pull that elbow in towards your hip bone. You're also going to pull that shoulder blade towards your spine. Nice work, everybody. That was round two. We're coming up on round three. Everybody's looking really, really good. It's all about the speed or lack thereof. All right, let's go on round three. So the reason why these exercises are so valuable when you do them well is because we have to learn how to use our bodies while our core is engaged in stabilizing our, stabilizing our spine. So it's really easy to curl a bunch of weight if you're flopping around and you don't know where that stress is going or you don't care. Now when you're Keeping that neutral spine, that rib cage is locked down, pelvis is tucked, obliques are fired up, glutes are burning. Now all of a sudden, this becomes real work. And that's okay. That's why we're here to do some real work. Seven. Yeah. Nice work, Brenda. Good stretches. Letting that lat get long. Working the, that whole shoulder complex. So we're coming up on our fourth set. If you're ahead of me, you can keep going. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, That last inch is everything on the row. All right, warriors. Get a little bit of rest here. There's not gonna be a lot of rest in the rest of the program. So it's good to get it in when you can get it in. How's that shoulder doing, Bootsy? You only can use one dumbbell. All right, last set. Last set. One.
two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. All right. Nice work, Reba. Nice work, Steve. Getting in that split stance. Nice and long and deep. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Huh. All right. Good work, everybody. Now, this next circuit's gonna be a little bit, a little bit more fast-paced. There's no rest in between the exercises. There's three exercises per circuit. So, we're gonna do a very simple neutral grip row. So I've got my weight. I'm gonna get in the bent position, butt back. I'm gonna pull it into my chest. And once I get that weight into my chest, I'm gonna squeeze my shoulder blades together for a second. So I'm going to pop one second, pop one second, pop one second. So you're gonna practice that scapular retraction. You're gonna do six reps there. Then you're going to do 12 tripod sit outs. That's six per side. So we're gonna be here, kicking through, up to the air, back down, pivoting the outside, kicking through, up. So we're gonna go six per side. So we're doing six, 12, and then we're gonna do 24 swimmers, which I'll be on the ground, reaching out, pulling in, out, pulling in. So, 6, 12, 24, we're only gonna go three rounds. There's not a ton of rest. At the end, I'm gonna rest about maybe 30 seconds to catch my breath. But the reason we're doing these in this order is we're working the type 2B explosive fibers first, so the lats. Then we're going into that tripod to get those type 2A. And then those long-term energy systems those type one muscle fibers are what we're hitting with the swimmer with the 24 reps. So we're going 6, 12, 24. We're starting with the row, neutral grip in three, two, one, and we're moving. One, 1,000. Just counting for 1,000. Squeeze, four, five, Squeeze, six. Once I'm done with that, then I'm dropping down to the ground, kicking out, kicking through, out. And when I'm doing my sit out, I'm pivoting to the outside foot, then launching my hips in the air so that they're flat, coming back down, Pivot to the outside, hips in the air so they're flat. Boom, 
boom, boom, boom, boom, boom. So six per side. Now we're dropping down into the swimmer, which is here, reaching out. So I'm keeping my fingertips splayed, pulling my elbows towards my hip bones. My eyes are about 12 inches out in front of me, just enough to keep a neutral posture. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10. 24, one, two, three, 24. Ha, huh. all right. So that was one round. We're gonna rest about 30 seconds. Then we're gonna do another six rows, 12 tripod sit outs at 24 swimmers. Yeah, yeah. So much fun. Whew. Okay. Got my dumbbell. And hit it. Hinge 1,000. 1,002. 1,003. 1,004. 1,005, 1,006, all right. Doing my tripod sit out. I'm here. One. One. Two, feet are flat. Two. Three. Three, four, four, five, five, six, six. Once you're done with all 12 of those, 24 swimmers. One. Two, fingers are splayed. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4. Yeah. Nice work, everybody. Okay. So remember, it's not what you do, it's how you do it. Going through, making sure you're getting that one second retraction on the row. Making sure your tripod sit outs look good. It's break dancing. It's fun break dancing. It's also good for your hips and back and shoulders and neck and triceps and basically everything. It's like the vitamin. That's like the vitamin of body weight exercises. Okay. Last set. So I've got my weight, hinging over, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005, 
1006. Tripod sit out. One. One. Whenever I'm doing these, I'm working on that outside hip. That outside hip is where I'm really trying to, to get in to the ceiling. That liberates my shoulder a little bit more. Two. Three. Three. Four. Four. Five. Five. Six. Six. Swimmers. For the finale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Fingers splayed, 19, 20, 1, 2, 3, and 4. <sighs> yeah, feel that in my butt, lower back, upper back. All right, warriors, water time. Okay. Now we're gonna do some more work with the dumbbells. This one's called a floor press. So I'm here on the ground. And I'm gonna do a dumbbell bench up to the sky. Come down, press, press. So I'm barely as soon as my triceps begin to touch the floor, I, I explode up. And then I go slow again down and explode up. So you're gonna do six of those. Nothing. First, let's get him doing the right thing. I'll, I'll keep narrating. So, after the uh, floor press, we're gonna do the skull crushers. I'm gonna get just one dumbbell. Now, if you have light dumbbells, you could probably use two, but I'm gonna demonstrate with one. My elbows point to the ceiling. And as the elbows point to the ceiling, I'm gonna try and touch the dumbbell to the floor, and then I'm gonna come overhead. So I'm basically, it's not even the floor, it's just like a 90 degree angle. I'm, I'm basically almost touching my head, but the elbows point to the same spot the whole time. So the elbows don't move much. This is a tough one, which is why the weight's important to get right. You don't want to use too much weight so that you can correctly apply. That's the skull crusher. So your triceps are feeling it now. And the third exercise to finish them off is 24 repetitions of the body saw. What's the body saw? Good question. I'm here, I'm gripping my saw handle. Elbows are dug into the floor. And I'm, what I'm doing is, I'm using my toes to pull my body towards my feet. And then I'm gonna use my elbows to pull my body forward. Feet forward. So there's basically, there's constant tension between your toes and your elbows, but your body's just drifting different ways. So I'm just, Rocking, my hips are at the same height the whole time. I'm just rocking back and forth. If you feel that in your low back, then don't rock. Stay in a plank, stay in something you can control and gradually add a little bit of movement. I want you to feel good. I want, that to feel, feel, I want you to feel it in your obliques and I want you to be strong throughout the whole process. 
Okay. 6, 12, 24, just like the last set. Not a ton of rest. We're getting after it. <clears throat> Back to the floor press. So if you're here and you're doing a good bench press, you're probably wondering, what am I doing with my legs? For one, lock them out and then pull, squeeze your butt, and then push your legs into the floor. That's gonna keep your core very engaged. In fact, that's gonna make your pressing easier because of all that tension that you've got in your body. Again, slow on the way down, power up. Don't drill the elbows into the floor. You wanna be soft. And after your six reps, then you're going to go into a skull crusher. Elbows pointing to the ceiling. Try to keep them isolated there. We're going for 12. Again, same body position, rib cage down, core is engaged, glutes are on. Three, four, we're doing 12 here. Goal is to lock out the elbow in the same position it started in. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay, got your 12 skull crushers. Now we're going to the body saw. And then you're pulling yourself over your elbows, pulling yourself towards your toes, elbows, toes. You gotta, every time you come back over your elbows, that's one. I'm on three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4. Whew. All right, grab your water. That was round one. Is that hurting your shoulder, Bitsy? Good. Just feeling weak, exhausted, demoralized. You should feel this as burning in your chest, triceps. That's the goal. We're gonna take the goal a little further in round two. One, legs are locked, glutes are on, two, three, four, five, six, one. When you're doing your overhead, when you're doing your skull crushers, it's easy to let that form break or the rib cage flare or the everything arch up, but you want to stay tight. Keep those legs flexed. Everything is on. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. 11, 12. Back to the body saw. So 
So I'm pulling to, to the feet first, back over the shoulders, that's one. Two. Hips at the same height, three, as the four. Shoulders, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4. Ha! Okay, update. If you're not getting a lot out of the body saw, it's probably because your butt's too high. I dropped my butt just a little bit, and ho, oh, I was feeling that in the inside out. I think my belly button was on fire. So, use it. Grab some water. If you're already ready, finish the last set. One, two, three, four, five, slow down, legs locked, six, skull crusher, one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Getting a Body saw, remember, it's all about that hip height, keeping everything tight. Reba, you feeling this in your back? No? Okay, good. Good. Yeah. Shoulders, triceps like a mofo. Yep. Good job, Brenda. Nice work. So last tip on the body saw was experimenting. For me, if my feet are close together and I'm tight, when I'm squeezing my shoes together, it gives me a little bit more juice. I don't know if that's good or bad, but I feel it in my adductors quite a bit. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Huh, okay. All right, it's time for dessert. So, we had a lot of fun with our lunges last, uh, last month. Today, we're going to do T-spine push-ups, knee grabs, and squats. The T-spine push-up, we already did uh, as part of our warm-up. So, we're only gonna do five per side. Feet out, we're gonna drop down, press up, reach for the sky. That's one, that's two. We're gonna go for a total of 10, 
three, four, five, up, six, up, seven, up, eight, up, nine, up, ten. Ha. Okay, ten. Then we're going into the knee grab. So I'm here on my back. One. Every time my shoulder blades touch the ground, that's one rep. Two. The hands come to my chest. I could throw them, but I have to bring them back to the chest. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. And then, last but definitely not least, the squat with hamstring bias. So, squat position, heels 18 inches apart. I'm dropping down into my, uh, into my squat stance. I'm gonna grip the inside of my shoe, chest is up, reach up, inhale, Inhale, I'm going to tuck chin to my chest, exhale, back down, inhale, inhale, tuck chin to chest, exhale. Whole time I want my feet, my fingertips under my feet while I'm moving so I can stay anchored. That's three, we're going to do five. Chin to chest. Ugh. Snap, crackle, and pop. I am because we are shared humanity, shared experience, shared happiness, shared compassion. Moving forward, as always, training for warriors, 10 penny recovery strategy, promoting kindness, promoting happiness, and encouraging you to continue to bring forth the warrior within. I could almost feel it like when I, um, when I do a tricep exercise and then like my scapula like releases and goes back to where it's supposed to, I was like, oh, my peg minor was like holding on to it. Yeah, mine's